What's up, y'all? In this video, we're gonna continue our conversation on rational functions. We're gonna to look to see how do we find the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes. We're gonna find the X and Y intercepts, and then we're gonna check it on a calculator or on a graph to see how we did. Let's get to it. Given the function f of X is X plus six over X minus two, find the asymptotes, find the intercepts, and confirm our uh, findings with a graph. All right, so, we saw in a previous video that the asymptotes are, are where uh, a function approaches but never gets to. So we can do a little bit of an analysis on this to figure out where is this function going to get to but never reach. I like to start with my vertical asymptote because this is really the easiest one to find to begin with. And what I'm going to do is I know my vertical asymptote, the, the, line, the vertical line that we're never going to get to, that's gonna be a value where X cannot work, where we cannot use the X value because there's not gonna be any associated Y values there, so we can never get that. So I need to find out where is this function non-existent. And the easiest place to do that is to set the denominator equal to zero because if the denominator equals zero, this function can't be done. That's an undefined function. So if you find where that denominator equals zero, you found your asymptote, your vertical asymptote. Our vertical asymptote, all we have to do is set x minus two equal to zero. So x is equal to positive two. That is where the vertical asymptote is. Our horizontal asymptote, that is gonna be where x gets really, really big. And when I'm talking big, I'm talking about really big. A million, a billion, infinity. A huge number, any enormous number that you can think of in the positive direction and in the negative direction. So let's put in f of one million. But what that's going to be is we've got one million plus six. One million six. We got one million minus two. And the way that I think of it is the six and the two in this case are fairly insignificant, right? Because if I've got um, if I've got a million dollars, if I've got a billion dollars, if I've got $10 billion, some really big number, and someone says, hey, here's six bucks, that's fairly insignificant to me as Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or whomever, right? Someone hand me a fiver, not a big deal. Or if I, if I just so happen to drop two, $2 on the floor, again, it's not gonna be that big a deal to me. So this plus six and this minus two are fairly insignificant. But what we are going to have is we're gonna have basically a huge number up on the numerator and a huge number up on the denominator that are both essentially one, right? One million six divided by 999,998 is essentially one. So that's gonna basically be, uh, that's gonna basically be one. And if I do the similar thing, Let's just say I've gone into a huge debt, continuing our use of, of money as an analogy. I'm $10 billion in debt. And someone says, hey, you owe me six bucks. I'll be like, yeah, whatever, add to it. And if someone says, oh, you're really in debt. Here's $6 for you. I'm gonna add to you so I can help you out. That $6 doesn't mean anything to me. So what I'm gonna end up having is a negative million, a negative billion, negative whatever, over a, that essentially that same value, right? If we follow that same idea, negative uh, one million or one billion, we're essentially gonna be getting to a value of one because we're gonna have a negative over a negative. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals one. That is where this thing is never going to reach. We're never going, or we're never going to get to that value of one. It's always gonna be just off of there, right? Because it's not gonna equal one. We're gonna be either approaching from the top, uh, from the, the positive, or we're gonna be approaching from the negative, but we're approaching one, but we're never going to get to one. To summarize, what we've done to find the vertical asymptote is we found the zeros of the denominator. That's what we do to find the vertical asymptote. Find the zeros of the denominator. And to find the horizontal asymptote, we substituted a really big number into our function. A really big, let's say a really big positive and negative number to be more specific. So that's how we find our horizontal asymptote. So your textbooks might say, oh, hey, 
your horizontal asymptote is going to be this divided by this, or it's going to be this number, or it's going to be that number, and it's going to give you some general notation. What I want you to do is I want you to understand what's happening with these functions. I want you to understand how to quickly get there. And if you have that understanding, you don't need to memorize it's this divided by that or opposite of this or whatever. All you need to do is you need to think, what happens if I make the denominator zero? What happens if I put really big numbers into this? And those that little bit of analysis, not only does it help you with graph analysis, uh, kind of understanding what's happening with a function, but it's also getting you to, to those, asympto those asymptotic values. How's that for a fancy word? All right, so let's find our x and y intercepts. So our x and y intercepts, that's gonna be essentially the same thing that we're always doing, right? To find our x intercept, we need to make our y value zero. And to find our y intercept, we need to make our x value equal to zero. So let's do that. Our x intercepts, that's when y equals zero. So zero equals x plus six over x minus two, right? I just made my y value, the f of x is my y value. I just made that thing equal to, equal to zero. I multiply both sides by x minus two. So zero equals x plus six, so x equaling negative six is the x-intercept. And that should also make sense because what makes a fraction zero when the numerator equals zero? So if I'm looking at this fractional function, this rational function, and I wanna make this whole thing equal zero, I just need to make the numerator equal zero. If I can make that numerator equal zero, put a negative six in there, and then I'm gonna have zero over something, but zero over anything is always gonna be zero. So hopefully that, kind of clues in with what you've been working on in the past as well. Now, what about our y-intercept? I didn't leave myself a lot of space here, but that's okay. My y-intercept is when my x values equal zero. Uh, so I'm gonna have y equals zero plus six and zero minus two. Ah, so y is gonna equal a six divided by a negative two or a negative three. There's my y-intercept. So what I've got here is an x-intercept at negative six. So I'm gonna cross the x-axis somewhere over here, right? If this is positive two, then it's a negative six is gonna be somewhere over here. And if this is y is one, then I should have a graph that has maybe, uh, maybe, you know, my scale is probably gonna be off, but I might have a graph that looks kind of like this. So I'm crossing at negative six, and then I'm crossing my y-axis. This is at positive two. So my y-axis would probably be somewhere over here. Again, my scale is off, and this will be down here at negative three. So if I've got some values, if I know I've got asymptotes here, and I've got these two values here, I probably have some, I probably have some kind of function that's going down like this, right? And then I've got uh, probably some function that looks like this. So let's take a look at what I've got here. This was graphed on Desmos. And yes, we actually match up with what we've been looking at above. We've got our function going here. It's going through negative six and negative three on our x-axis and our y-axis. It looks like we've got a, hor or a vertical asymptote at approximately two. And it looks like we've got a horizontal asymptote at approximately one. Now we've got one other example to look at and it says, now sketch it from scratch. We've got something else here, two x minus three over x plus one and use a sine diagram to help you. How are we gonna use a sine diagram with this? Well, we did do look at sine diagrams in our quadratics videos uh, and I wonder if it's gonna work the same way. We'll find out in the next video after you hit a thumbs up, give me a like on this video and before you go to the next video, try this one. Try this on your own and see if you can sketch out the graph without using a calculator based on some of the techniques that we've done in here. So again, give me that like and I'll see you in the next video.